To some historians, the 18th century was a pretty uneventful era in Gloucester. In fact, George Council, writing in 1820, said that between the visit of James II in 1687 and George III in 1788, nothing of any significance happened at all. Despite this relatively uneventful period, this small city steeped in history had an unusually significant impact upon the history of the modern United States. In a relatively short period of time, between 1714 and 1750, within a 500 metre radius in this magnificent Gloucester Cathedral, three individuals were born who would go on to have a significant impact on American history. So life was pretty good for the aristocracy and Gloucester was becoming a social centre. The rich in the winter season would come to Gloucester for concerts and plays and many of these were put on in the Bell Hotel in Southgate Street and this is where our story begins. This building behind me is all that remains of the Bell Hotel here in Southgate Street, Gloucester. And this once glorious establishment used to stretch much further along the street. And in 1714, George Whitfield was born here because his father was the landlord of this fine establishment. Although largely forgotten today, George Whitfield probably became the most famous person of the 18th century, both in Britain and in America. He was a preacher who, with such a resounding voice, could command the attention of thousands of people at the same time, in the open air. As a young boy, George Whitfield attended the Crip School here in Southgate Street, in its original site in Gloucester. In fact, as a young boy, he used to read plays insatiably and would often skip school just to practice his performances. Later in life, this theatrical character with the resounding voice went on to use his skills in his preaching. And in fact, he preached his first sermon here in St. Mary de Crypt, right next door. As a teenager, Whitfield attended Pembroke College, Oxford, where he fell in with a group of Methodists called the Holy Club. They were led by some brothers called John and Charles Wesley. And under their tutelage, he became quite a prolific preacher. His preaching style was unorthodox, but charismatic. And because of this, the church refused him permission to preach in their pulpits. So he began to preach outdoors, and he toured the length and breadth of Britain and Ireland, gaining quite a notoriety as a very loud speaker. He's recorded as having given a sermon out here on Stonehouse Green to a crowd of over 5,000 people. In 1738, at the age of 24, George was invited to Savannah, Georgia, to become the rector. It was to be his first of seven visits to America over the next 32 years. One of his major achievements in Savannah was the founding of the Bethesda Orphanage, the equivalent of Dr. Bernardo's in Britain, and still running to this day. He also became great friends with Benjamin Franklin, and they co-founded Pennsylvania State University. And through his great popularity in America, Whitfield was able to raise enough funds to restock Harvard University Library when it burnt down in 1764. He's recorded as having preached 18,000 sermons in his life to millions of people. And despite being the most popular man in Britain and America at the time, he was never to return to his hometown of Gloucester on his final visit to America in Massachusetts, at the age of 55, he was to fall ill and die. And that's where his body still lies. This is the 8th century St. Oswald's Priory, a burial place of Queen Ethelflaed. 
but in the 18th century it had been converted into uh, St Catherine's Parish Church and our next character, Button Gwinnett, was christened here in 1736. His father was the vicar of a parish and went on to become the vicar of Down Hatherley Church just north of Gloucester, where his family tomb still stands to this day. Button was educated at the Cathedral College, which went on to become what we call today the King's School. Button later married and moved to Wolverhampton, where he failed at several enterprises as a shopkeeper. Button then thought that he would try his luck in America, so he made his way via Jamaica to Savannah in Georgia, where he attempted to run a plantation on an unsuitable piece of land for which he had borrowed heavily. This failed along with other business ventures, but by this time Button had taken an interest in politics and got himself elected as governor of Georgia. It was at this time that Button's path crossed that of a man called Lachlan McIntosh, who, funnily enough, had a, a link with Gloucester. He was a beneficiary of George Whitfield's Bethesda Orphanage. He'd become an orphan when his brother had been killed by an alligator in the Savannah River and his father and mother had died. And he went on to become a general in the Georgia military. A feud began between Button Gwinnett and Lachlan McIntosh over who should govern military matters in the state of Georgia. At the time, Florida was part of the Spanish Empire and as governor, Button Gwinnett ordered an invasion of the state. McIntosh led the force but it failed spectacularly and they both blamed one another. In the meantime, as governor, Button Gwinnett had traveled to Philadelphia with other delegates. And as he was fiercely in favor of America breaking away from Britain, he was the second person to sign the American Declaration of Independence. His signature is now one of the most sought after as a collector's item. So when Button Gwinnett returned to Savannah, he lost popularity because of his public argument with Lachlan McIntosh, and he lost his seat as governor, and Lachlan McIntosh accused him of being a lying scoundrel. So Button Gwinnett challenged him to a duel, and on the 13th of May 1777, they faced each other and shot each other in the leg. But whilst Lachlan McIntosh survived, Button Gwinnett died three days later from gangrene. If George Whitfield, a preacher from Gloucester, had not founded the Bethesda Orphanage in Savannah, Georgia, Lachlan McIntosh would have been a destitute orphan and would never have become a general. Whitfield's philanthropy had inadvertently led to the death of his fellow Gloucestrian, Button Gwinnett. Born less than 500 yards apart and 22 years, and yet they now both still lie in America. Now, if you're wondering about the last member of our trio who had a significant impact on American history, well, his name was John Stafford Smith, born in 1750, and he attended the Cathedral Choir and went on to become a very famous composer. In fact, he wrote this. Mm -hmm. 